Hello everybody, this is Budrich and in this video we are not going to do any web dev things but it is kind of related in a way but we will, uh, I will show you a way here um, uh, where a technique how you can insert any SVG icons into for example Polybar but this this is something that's useful for all, all kinds of things and it's, uh, yeah, whatever, let's just dig into it um, I have talked about this before that I use SVG images here for, for the uh, menu here on my web page, but uh, for the icons in the menu. But another common uh, way to include icons uh, on the web is to use uh, an icon font, uh, for example font awesome, which is the icon font I use here in, in the polybar to, to add these uh, icons here. And I made a, a video uh, a couple of years uh, ago, or yeah, uh, about um, about uh, how to include this in in, in Polybar. Uh, the video is called "Fonts Are Awesome with Polybar." Let's Linux number nineteen, uh, where I explain how that works. So maybe watch that also if you get lost here, but. Um, this uh, uh, technique, it only lets you use a certain icon font, font awesome in, in this case, but there are other uh, icon fonts as well. Here I have a directory with uh, the icons I used on my old homepage where I used a different icon font called the glyph icons. Um, and when you include fonts on the web, there are a couple of special web uh, um, uh, formats, web specific uh, uh, font formats here that are created uh, to reduce file size. So you can see here the WAF2 is uh, 18 kilobytes, uh, the normal TTF is 45 kilobytes, but they include the exact same uh, uh, icons. And then I also have some normal fonts here, uh, like Hack, and also Fixed Sys here, which is at the whopping. Uh, 575 kilobytes for just one font. Uh, but the drawback, uh, or one drawback using fonts for icons on a home page, is that uh, you have to include the whole uh, icon set, meaning that you will get a much larger file size than you really need, you know, because maybe you only use, uh, I don't know now exactly, but in this uh, menu here, I use about uh, 10, 15 different icons here. Uh, but the icon set itself might include 100, maybe 200 icons. Um, but there is this really nice little web app called Fontello, fontello.com, uh, that lets you create your own icon fonts. And what you do is uh, you open fontello.com, then you get this page here with, with uh, some uh, icon font sets on the screen here. This is like their own uh, icon font, Fontelico, but you can also see the old 4.7 4 version of Font Awesome because I think they have changed uh, the license in, in the uh, uh, version 5 and, and later versions of Font Awesome. And it is, uh, it is really not free and, and, and stuff anymore. And here you can see how, how large this icon set is. Uh, but there are some other uh, icons, font icons as well. And the, the way Fontello works here is that you can select the icons from, uh, select the icons you want and create a new icon font. And the coolest thing is that you can combine different icons, icon sets here. Here I take this and I take this and I, I take this and, and most of the time the, when you got all of these icon sets available, you can find more or less all the icons you would uh, uh, imagine here on, on this page except the ones that you would create yourself of course because they, they are not available here since you have maybe created them yourself but then we have this thing here drag custom SVG icons or SVG font here and here I actually have this glyph icons as uh, an SVG font and if I drag this here it will import uh, that font. So now we have this icon set as well here, uh, which is kind of cool. 
But you can also drag uh, uh, individual SVG images here. So if we drag this airplane in here, you'll see now we have that airplane here. And this of course means that you can uh, create your own uh, icons or modify an uh, already existing icon. Let's do some st stupid stuff in Inkscape here. Uh, maybe this, uh, I don't know. Sad. You're sad now. Okay, there. <laughs> okay, now we got that font icon here. Drag uh, <laughs> that icon to this place here, and then uh, you can. Uh, now I have eight icons selected here because I, I did some random selections there. Uh, and if we also select our own custom icon, then that is included in this uh, uh, download uh, thing here. Uh, before anything else, uh, name your font. Give it a unique name here. So, so let's call it uh, Buds Specials <laughs> or something, whatever. And then you can just download this. If you want to customize it further, you can do so as well. You can change the names of, of the fonts, uh, uh, how you want them appear in, in the font and stuff. And you can even customize which uh, Unicode uh, uh, character uh, or Unicode it should occupy uh, later, whatever. Uh, but create your font, name it uh, a unique name, download that font, clicking this button here, uh, so you will get a zip file to save somewhere. I have created a directory here called font test, so let's save it there. And now we have it here. Uh, then unzip this, if uh, you might need the unzip uh, command line utility here, so unzip that guy, now uh, we got uh, the unzipped version and in that directory you will have a font directory with your own custom font and here we can see since it only includes these nine icons here uh, it, um, the, the, the size is only about 4 kilobytes for a, a WAF and about 7 kilobytes for the TTF um, now uh, let's install this font so we can use it on our system for in for example polybar here um, and one way to install fonts is to just place it in the directory uh, home.fonts uh, and then just place the ttf font there it at least works for me. I think they have changed this so you can install fonts to dot local slash fonts or something now. I'm not sure, but uh, this, this works uh, for me. When you have placed it here, I recommend that you execute the command fc cache. That will kind of reload the font cache on your system. Uh, and then you can do fc dash list. Uh, if you just run that command, it will list out all installed fonts. Uh, but if you pipe that to grep and then search for your uh, new font here, buds special here. Special. There, prints out this line here. And this uh, is uh, the name that we can use in, for example, Polybar if we want to include this font to our font list there. And that's what we want to do. So I copy this, uh, open Sublime, and here I already have my uh, polybar config stuff open here. So we just create a new uh, font here, but instead of font awesome five brands, we paste uh, uh, this stuff here, style regular, regular, and then you can uh, add a colon and then some more options, like for example, the size you want the font to appear in and, and things like that. I've added here pixel size 10 and anti-alias true and vertical uh, alignment 3 pixels. Then you also need to give it a unique uh, index here in the font, font list here. So font 3 will now be uh, buds special. Uh, then uh, let's say we want to switch one of these icons uh, to, uh, to this icon, you know. Uh, 
then we have to find uh, that icon somehow uh, and, and replace one. Yeah, let's replace this uh, wallpaper icon here. I like to use uh, this program, uh, GUchar map, uh, which you might need to install if you don't have it installed. Uh, and now uh, it have already pre-selected the correct blocks and stuff here, so that's nice. Uh, but uh, the first thing you should do here is uh, in this uh, drop-down here, which is empty now, select uh, the font that you want to, to view. So I select Buds Special here, and then in the View menu, select Show only glyphs from this font. So that means it will uh, only show the, the fonts included or, or the glyphs included in this font, which is only uh, eight different uh, glyphs. Uh, and then also if, if it's not selected here, select by Unicode block. The, these two uh, define which uh, type of list you will see in this uh, left side of the screen here. But if you select by Unicode block and then you select private use area. That's uh, the block, the Unicode block where, where your custom fonts are, are stored. The other blocks here, they will be empty now in this font. So private use area. And then find the font or the glyph. And here she is. Uh, you can double click this and then it will appear here in this input thing here. You can just select it and copy it. And then we can go back to polybar modules here and then uh, paste it here. But now it, uh, we, we don't see anything, but something is pasted here. Uh, we can see if it worked by reloading polybar here. And yes, it's, uh, it appears to have worked, but uh, the reason it is uh, blank here in Sublime is because Sublime was started before the font was installed and this uh, this is probably true for other text editors and stuff as well So don't worry. Uh, I think all, all we need to do is uh, restart Sublime here and Now it will know about that font and now we can also see the glyph in Sublime here But that's how, how you can import your own uh, SVG icons into for example polybar uh, and also a way to, to create a, a much smaller uh, font uh, which uh, it probably doesn't make that much of a difference for, for uh, uh, your own uh, bar and stuff that you're running but uh, there will be a slightly smaller uh, memory footprint if you use uh, a smaller font of course uh, but uh, but those things are, are actually more important for uh, uh, when you're doing web web dev and stuff But the cool thing is that you can easily now design your own fonts for your uh, own bars and stuff uh, And that's what I wanted to show you uh, I think in a later video I will show you how to uh, trim other fonts as well because here we could see the uh, fixed sys font here it is actually 575 kilobytes and this font that I use here for the ASCII art here that is actually fixed sys but a trimmed version of that uh, I actually use uh, um, uh, I customize that uh, that icon. Oh. Ah, God damn it! Now I, I don't know how to. I would like to view the back. Yeah, here you can see it. I think. No. Okay, whatever. Maybe if I reload then. Okay, whatever. I, I customized the fixed sys icon and trimmed all unneeded uh, characters from it. So it's actually only about uh, 80 bytes uh, file size, uh, which is kind of a lot smaller than 500,000 bytes. Uh, but that's a, a, a different... Uh, uh, way you do that when you want to trim normal fonts. Well, now this is not really normal either, but you can trim uh, like fonts li with normal text and stuff also, and, and remove all uh, all um, characters and glyphs that you don't uh, 
that you don't need, you know, because so, some fonts, maybe you don't need the Arabic characters for, for a font or, or whatever weird characters, you know. Some fonts include almost all of all characters you can think of. And, and if you use such a font on a web page, then you will end up with a very large font like this fixed sys here, for example. Okay. Um, yeah, here is the fixed sys, let's see. Or whatever. Thank you for watching, everybody. Have a great day. <laughs> Bye.